Okay, here we have two conventional light bulbs. And they're 15 watt, 120 volt. We'll bring one up close to the camera here so the construction of the bulb can be seen. It's too close. Yeah. Just, yeah, back, back there is fine. And uh, I'm going to sharp focus on this. You have to go farther away. Either. They're about there. That's fine. Yeah, so you can see the filament. It's a little uh, ring filament. That's great. Right, and one interesting feature of these bulbs is they have a very big vacuum space, which is not usually found in most light bulbs, and they're not filled with gas like most light bulbs are. These are vacuum light bulbs. So we'll have two of them here. This one and this one. One will run off of conventional 60 cycle alternating current, and the other one will run off of the longitudinal current. And we can see the brightness is pretty close to the same. Now, I'll Tom come over and see if he experiences any difference between the light and the two balls. Okay, well, one thing I do notice just visually, and uh, we really can't record this because we don't have the proper detectors, but just the character of the light. This uh, the electromagnetic light, transverse, looks somewhat reddish to my eye, and this looks somewhat bluish. And it just feels kind of hot, like a regular bulb. Around this one here, I feel a pressure coming off, a charge and a pressure, which I felt a little shock there also. And, uh, but the character of the light is definitely different. There is a distinct pressure, and the higher up we turn the power going in, the stronger the pressure is. And uh, now we'll give uh, another demonstration which shows another characteristic of this opposite to the pressure. Okay, one other thing I'd like to point out is the fact that this situation over here is very stable and quiet. We have, according to the very act, 115 volts across the bulb. This light bulb here, the socket, is arcing over inside, indicating there's several thousand volts across the bulb. So we can start to see some difference happening here. Now what happens is when you have gas in the bulb, as well as the filament, this very high voltage that appears across the bulb energizes the gas, and you end up with what would be a full-spectrum light bulb which still retains its incandescent characteristics. But these bulbs being vacuum, we can't really fully demonstrate this. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to, we have a force coming off the bulb, then we can study this force. And what we'll do is we'll turn the power off for a second here. And we have a little piece of copper strip dangling from insulated tape. Let me just center this up here a little bit. I can handle it. No, it's got to be lower. Okay, first we'll bring the strip near the Tesla current bulb. Turn it on. See the traction. Okay, let me turn it on a couple times. Yo. Uh, move it far, slightly farther away. And let me uh, get a real tight focus turn on this. Power on. I'll bring it near it and see where it folds in. It wants to hang it on there. Okay, now what we'll do next. Stop. Well, that's just a piece. That's a piece of copper foil. Copper foil. Hanging copper tape. Hanging on a piece of masking tape. masking tape. Turn on the conventional, and of course, you see we get no effect. Even closer, right? Right up to it, and as can be expected, there's really not much of anything happening. Right, okay. Just a little bit of residual charge that was left on the metal. I'm going to go back to this one. And make the attraction. Okay, I'm going to turn the power off. Now I can say, well, it's just high voltage. But what we'll do is we'll put this point here. So now what you're bypassing the light bulb. Bypassing the light bulb. We're just so we're just running the current right, past just the strip. have the high voltage itself next to the thing. Okay, turn it on. No attraction. We can see it's definitely charged there. Bring the point right up to it. No desire at all to be attracted to it. So what you're saying is that the the attraction is related to the action that's happening in the bulb. Right. The bulb is producing rays. As well as light rays, it's producing another form of ray which exhibits mechanical action at a distance. The human body experiences it as pushing out, but material objects 
experience that is pushing in. Okay, can we see that one, that effect one more time? Let me start with it just a little bit farther away. We can turn this just so we can have an idea. And let me just focus right tight in there. Okay. Ready? Pulls it right in. Okay, now what this does is bring us to a whole new area of Tesla's wireless power transmission, which we'll get into into part two. And we'll go back to the original patent and start out from there. So we'll take a brief break here.